that's not a butterfly about to emerge from its pupa, but rather a chalcid wasp that spent its childhood eating the developing butterfly. These mostly solitary parasitoids lay their eggs into moth, butterfly, and fly larva and pupa. They also parasitize other wasp parasites. Of course, that's called hyperparasitism and can be bad news for biological control because the wasps being released to control a pest species, such as a caterpillar, are wiped out by another wasp. This is a diverse family with 15 genera and over 400 species. They are easy to tell apart because of their swollen femur and curved tibia. The 22 known species of this family lay their eggs on flowers or leaves. Their hope is that they will get carried into an ant nest. The wasp larva hatch and latch onto an ant larva. It waits until the ant pupates before it develops. Both adult and larva wasps are fed by the confused worker ants. Check out the shape of the abdomen and the lack of wing venation. These are small wasps with 65 genera and nearly a thousand species. They are mostly parasitoids on the young stages of other insects, especially those that live in plant tissue. Many pteromalid wasps are bright green or blue. They are parasitoid wasps on spiders and seven orders of insects, mostly attacking the larva or pupa. For an ID, check out the wing. A few species of the 250 use their wings to swim underwater looking for water beetle eggs. One characteristic is a wimpy hind wing. Although this species has a chalcid-like leg, it's really a toromididae. They do have a characteristic large hind coxa, that is the first leg segment, Braconids have antennae with 14 to 98 segments. Their forewing has at least four enclosed cells and there is no cross vein in this cell. Braconids are parasites on other insects, especially on beetles, moths, butterflies, flies, and bugs. Despite being eaten nearly hollow by wasp larva, this caterpillar is carrying around numerous wasp pupa that formed on its back after the larva pigged out. Most ichneumonids are parasitoids of insects and spiders. Species that attack insects go for the larva and pupa, while those species that like spiders aren't so picky and attack any stage, including the adult spider. Ichneumonids are usually seen alone and most are solitary. This wasp is smelling out beetle larva, or beetle juice, deep inside the log. With the help of this extra long ovipositor, it hopes to skewer the larva as it squirms unaware inside the wood. It's no easy task to push your ovipositor through the wood, rotted or not. It's tough to be a mother. These wasps defend themselves with a stinger, but this black and white pattern provides camo a la zebra. Many in this family are used to control pests in Central America. Even some species are nocturnal hunters, but most are on the prowl during the day. They all seem to be in a hurry, like a weasel on the hunt. Like the braconids, they have antennae with 16 or more segments. 
The second and third abdominal segments are separate, and the wing has this cross vein here. Another help is the triangular shape of this cell. One of the some 150 species of bethylids, called a picuyum, always seems to get up one's shirt, and after a quick tour, buries its stinger into your skin. Small and painful. To ID them, look at the wing venation and the ant-like head, as well as the metallic shine. They attack beetle larvae. The velvet ants are wasps, but the wingless females do look like ants. The males have wings and seem to be less noticeable. They can give you a memorable sting, so it's best not to pick them up. Some of the 37 species in Costa Rica are out and about in the day, and others at night. Their larvae are solitary and are ectoparasites on other insects, such as the larva or pupa of bees, wasps, flies, moths, beetles, and cockroaches.